Hello friends and welcome to this video. We are learning the subject advanced digital signal processing and we have the seventh chapter which is titled as wavelet transform. So to understand the wavelet theory, we started with the very first topic that it was the origins of wavelet. We have seen the development of wavelet theory in comparison to what is their Fourier theory. Both are having the mathematical foundations and addressing potentially the signal processing applications. Wavelet theory is more beneficial nowadays as compared to the Fourier tool. That is why I have got a lot of popularity here. Now, in the wavelet family, we have been introduced to the Haar wavelet. So, for the Haar wavelet, we have the scaling function and the wavelet function. For the scaling function, we have seen the translation and scaling operations in the previous video. We have addressed also the orthogonality and orthonormality of the translated versions of the wavelet scaling function. Now it's time to define a function space that is most of the time identified by capital V0. So let us have the topic name simply function space and we shall begin to see how do we define this capital V0 as a functional space and how it is used further for the signal representation by the use of Haar wavelet. So let us begin with the topic. So here we start with our topic, the topic titled function space here. So as we have covered a couple of our previous videos where the scaling function, I hope you remember, is denoted as phi of t here. Now, thereupon, in the previous video, we have seen that the functional basis, what we have obtained by translating the scaling function, the scaling function of the Haar wavelet is originally having amplitude level equal to 1 for the duration 0 to 1. And when we have the translation on the time axis, we get the translated version says phi of t plus 1 phi of t minus 1, phi of t minus 2 and so on. So we have also checked that the functional basis what we have listed in this particular set here. Here you see original scaling function phi of t. Then we have phi of t plus 1, phi of t minus 1. So in both the directions we can have the various types of the translated versions of the original wavelet scaling function especially the Haar function here. So I will call upon this set to be of the orthonormal function that we have validated in the previous video. So these are the translated versions of a single function that we have denoted at the center here. So these orthonormal functions are able to have representation of a certain type of a signal here. So for this purpose, we have this accompanying illustration whereupon on the horizontal axis, you see the time intervals marked. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 here. So these are the translated versions here. Originally we have for the time duration 0 to 1 marking. What is the original scaling function here? You see phi of t here. So if the amplitude is equal to 1, so this is shown here, this is phi of t. For the same amplitude level 1, if we have for the duration, here it is 1 to 2. So it will be called as phi of t minus 1. So again, for the same amplitude level 1, if we have the time duration 2 to 3, we get it represented by phi of t minus 2 here. So in this way, the general representation can be phi of t minus k here. Now, what you see with the solid line in this illustration, here we start at the amplitude level 3, we go to the amplitude level 4 for the next time interval, we get back downwards to the amplitude level 2 for next time interval, we go to the amplitude level 5 here, then to the amplitude level 4, then for next two consecutive intervals we have amplitude level equal to 3 
then we have switched to the amplitude level four here please consider the symmetry so this is what the change into the amplitude label that we have shown in this graphical illustration here on the vertical axis we have phi of t here already represented so you consider whatever i have overrided here the solid line is a certain kind of a signal that is to be represented with the help of the har wavelet theory i can see here so if you just focus on what kind of signal i have represented here it is simply a sort of random staircase here so let us express this random staircase type of the signal using the basis that we have defined into the previous video which are actually the translated versions of the original har scaling function so as we have already represented the functional set here that is having the translated versions and the original form of the har scaling function let us denote it as capital v0 the function space here spanned by the set of bases shown into the above set here and let us denote it mathematically as capital v0 is equal to for the span ranging for the k as a variable here we have phi of t minus k here so if we have a consideration of any function in concern to this function space that we are defining let us say the function is equal to f of t expressed as the summation k is equal to minus infinity to infinity for the multiplication of a sub x k with phi of t minus k so you recall back phi of t minus k are the translated versions of the original har scaling function which are considered as bases see bases are completely independent and these are used for representation of any sort of signal here and they are called as bases only when they satisfy the property of orthogonality as well as the ortho normality here so along with phi of t minus k into the second equation of f of t that you see there it is a sub x k here a sub x k in general is representing real numbers or what you can call the scalars here see for this representation you will come to see that we are having a continuous time of changes into the a sub x k for generating a continuously defined new function or what we can call as a signal function is of course a mathematical representation of any sort of information what we can call as signal here so the set of all such signals will constitute the function space capital v0 that we have defined into the first equation here so what it was the earlier illustration on the previous slide i get back to here it is so the signal that is represented by the solid line i have already discussed with you people so let us have the representation of the same signal which is having a piece wise constant type of amplitude into the unit intervals defined so thereupon in the functional space capital v0 we are having the representation with this functional basis so f of t will be equal to 3 times phi of t see phi of t is having amplitude 1 for the duration of time interval 0 to 1 but you see at the start there it is amplitude level 3 so we scale it so 3 times phi of t which is further added to 4 times you check the amplitude level there upon so it is at the 4 4 times phi of t minus 1 further added by 2 times phi of t minus 2 further added to phi o times phi of t minus 3 added by 4 times phi of t minus 4 next we add it with 3 times phi of t minus phi o plus 3 times phi of t minus 6 and finally 4 times phi of t minus 7 so we have to always remember that the set of all such signals are constituting 
the signal space that we can denote here after by capital V0 as mathematically expressed by the first equation here. Now, in this concern, there can be a question into your mind. The question can be whether the signals in general randomly, let us have for example the illustration, next illustration here, let us say this kind of the signal here. Or will that be belonging to the functional space that just now we have defined to be capital V0, which is spanned by the Haar scaling function? So you will come to see that the amplitude levels into these signals. See, in this illustration, we have two signals here. See, the time durations, we have the specific intervals as 0 to 1, 0, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, where the constant amplitude originally for denoting the translated versions of the scaling function are shown here. The original scaling function phi of t at the bottom you see next to that phi of t minus 1, phi of t minus 2, phi of t minus 3, phi of t minus 4 this way. But the functions those which have been represented as f of t or f1 of t, these are not having the piecewise constant amplitude here. See, for the case of f of t, we see there it is a linearity into the time interval here. But either it is linearly increasing or decreasing, it is not at all constant here. So, next to that, if you check f1 of t, it is quite random here. So, as we cannot have the discretization of these signals f1 of t or f of t in general as seen in this particular illustration we cannot have the representation of these types of the signals with the functional space defined as capital V0. So the signal into the V0 space must be a piecewise constant in each unit interval is the condition to make the use of function space capital V0 that just now we have defined here. So that is why to see this particular limitation for making the applicability of the Haar wavelet theory applicable to any kind of the signal, there it is a need of more finer Haar scaling functions. That is why the next topic we are going to address that it will be titled finer Haar scaling functions into the same chapter which is wavelet transform. Thank you.